I want to tell you something, you know, change is going to take place in your life in one or two ways, my friends. Change comes into your life in one or two ways, either by choice or by circumstances beyond your control. Either way, when it happens, you have to be able to do more than just accept change. I hear people say this all the time, accept it. Accepting is okay, but when you say, I'll accept it, what you're really saying to yourself, okay, I'll do it, but I'm not going to like it. What I'm asking you to do through any challenge in your life is to embrace the change. This is what I mean when I say embrace the change. You're going through it with an unshakable faith that somehow, some way, some good will come out of even the most intense situation. The biggest inspiration of my life is my brother Michael. No one has taught me more on how to embrace the changes in my life more than he has. No one has taught me more on how to create an optimistic attitude when life throws something major in your face more than he has. No one has taught me more on how to enjoy the process during life's tough times more than he has. He's 100% disabled as a result of the Vietnam War. 21 feet of his small intestine were either taken out or blown out on the battlefield. His kidneys were wired and other internal organs were damaged as well. The only reason why I'm being graphic here is that I want you to understand what he went through so you could appreciate how he beat this. Doctors from all over the world that said he couldn't make it, he wouldn't make it, you just didn't think it could happen. I'll never forget the first time that I saw him in St. Albans Naval Hospital in Queens. If it hadn't have been for my mom and dad in the room with him, I never would have known it was him. He went from 168 pounds to 88 pounds. In the room with my mom and dad were his two friends from high school and his Marine Corps buddy whom he had gotten wounded with. And the whole day my brother was going in and out of consciousness. And it was at the end of the day when the doctors came in and gave us the bad news and said, I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like he's going to make it, not even through the night. I'll never forget the look on my mom and dad's face. His two friends from high school walked out of the room with his Marine Corps buddy was hitting the wall saying why. And as all this was happening, I was only 17 years old at the time. I remember staring at my brother and wondering if this is going to be the last time that I'm ever going to see him. All these thoughts are going through my head and I'm noticing something very strange is happening. His hand is slowly starting to rise from his side. He clenched his fist, and up came his middle finger. <laughs> right then and there, I knew he was going to try and make it. Why? Because he still had his sick sense of humor. That was his humor being's response to that doctor's diagnosis, and that was, the, that was the response he gave them every single time they told him he couldn't and wouldn't be able to do something. First, they said he wouldn't live long. Well, they're wrong because he's alive today. Then they said that he would have to eat sore food, oatmeal, baby food, and vegetables for the rest of his life because they didn't think his body could retain anything solid. You want to know what my brother's attitude was? Hey, don't you ever tell me what I'm going to eat, all right? I'm going to eat a bowl of pasta and a couple of meatballs even if I have to sit on a toilet while I'm eating it. <laughs> and you laugh, he lived long enough where his small intestine stretched a bit and he was able to compensate and use the rest of his digestive system for what his small intestine could no longer do. To this day, doctors say that what happened was a miracle. When he goes back for his checkups, they say, here comes the miracle man. And you want to know what? I believe it was a miracle. I believe in miracles. Here's the point I'm making here today, my friends. You all have opportunities to perform your own miracles when life is throwing something at you. Any change that takes place. It's a matter of what you believe. Where do your beliefs come from? The thoughts you keep programming in your brain. My brother incorporated a belief system that was absolutely incredible. First of all, he never said, why me? Which is what we have a tendency to do when we're confronted with a change in our lives. First thing you do is, why, why is this happening? When you do that, you intensify the negativity. Instead, he said, this is me. This is what happened. This is what I have to deal with. What can I do to turn this around? Who can I go to that can help me to turn this around? He never focused on what was missing in his life. He always concentrated on what he had left. Every time someone would remind him that 21 feet of his intestine were taken out, he would cut them in the middle of the sentence and say, no, I have a foot left, watch what I do with this. You see the difference in that attitude? You see how that can turn your mindset totally around? But the thing that helped him more than anything else, the thing that helped him to survive, to really endure the situation, and if he were here, he would tell you this, he sensed the importance of enjoying himself and finding the laughter during the rebuilding process. This is what separated him from everyone else in that hospital. And I'm not passing judgment here, 
But I was in that hospital almost every day. And I honestly believe what separated my brother from these other people is that these other guys were saying, how can I enjoy myself and find the laughter the way I am? Or I'll enjoy myself and find the laughter if and when I get better. No. My brother said, I'm going to enjoy myself as much as I possibly can. And I am going to try to find the laughter. As a result, it helped him to get better. You see the difference in that mindset? To make a long story short, he was in the hospital for a year and a half. When he got out, he was 95 pounds. He said he was going to go to college. And we didn't think he'd be able to do it because he wasn't Mr. Wizkid in high school. He got left back a few times. He got in trouble quite a bit. He did go to college. He had to go at night. He had to prove himself. He got straight A's. They told him he can go full time. He graduated with degrees in psychology, administration, and history. He went back to the same school that he graduated from and he became a history teacher. From there he became an attendance officer. From there he became assistant principal. From assistant principal he became a principal. And then when he was about to retire they said no. And they made him superintendent of the entire school system. Now you're looking at me right now and you're saying, gee Steve, that's a wonderful story, but what does that have to do with us? Nothing. I just had some time to kill and I thought maybe you'd... It has everything to do with you because here's the point, the moral of the story, my friends. It's not what happens to you that determines how successful and how happy you're going to be or whether you're going to succeed in fulfilling your dream or not. It's what you do about what happens that makes the difference. It's the choices that you make and the actions that you take that makes the difference. It's the thoughts that you have about any challenge that formulates the belief and the attitude that you have that makes the difference. It's what you're focusing on 24-7 that makes the difference and what you're saying out loud to yourself and to the entire universe that makes the difference. And are you going to allow yourself to enjoy yourself during the process and will you dare to find the laughter in between the tough times? I'm looking at you all right now and I'm telling you, you all have an abundance of optimism within you somewhere. Some of us, though, have an incredible amount of negativity burying that optimism. These tools that I just gave you, the power of your thoughts, the power of choice to enjoy yourself during the rebuilding process, and the power of your humor being are the tools that you need to drill for that optimism. Hey, my friends, I could only give you the tools. It's up to you as to whether you use them or not.